Okay, so now you take off the tape. You have a funky arm like that. Go nice and slow with it. You don't want to rip your skin, damage your skin. You can use painter's tape too. I heard that's not as harsh, but this is literally like the cheap tape that barely sticks anyway, so it works enough. Okay, so now you, if you have any fallout, you can take your makeup wipe and go under your eye. Wipe away any fallout. I just had a little shimmer. So now that that's taken care of, I take my eye prep start. And I just put it under my eyes. If you put all this lotion on before, your tape won't stick as well and then like I said you're gonna rip off what you just put on anyway so I don't understand why I see all these people moisturizing as long as you already moisturized your eyelids and all that which you really don't need to unless you have epically epically dry eyelids the um I just use a good face wash makeup removing wipes And at night, I put my eye treatment on. Then I go through. I put that on. I do have serums that I put on too, but we won't get into serums right now. I'm just going to do basic. Serums are good for uh, a whole different array of things. Like one of my favorite ones almost out of it's a sample but I mean I don't think you can won't be able to read that but it smells good it feels good my skin looks amazing when I use it it's got little gold flecks in it 24 karat magic and me you know just make sure you always are hydrated so if you try to put your makeup on over dry skin, it's just not going to lay right. You're going to end up with cracks and a whole bunch of nastiness. And uh, this is a great face lotion to use. It's gel based. It's not oil based. So it doesn't clog your pores at all. So you don't have to worry about um, giving you a breakout or anything. The only thing you might have is if you're sensitive or allergic to it so you always do a patch test but it's uh it's very good i've liked it so far i'm almost out of it and i rarely finish a face product like that because i always find it ends up after a couple weeks breaking me out or giving me blackheads when it said it's not supposed to so this hasn't done that then I go and I prime my face. I got the Fenty Beauty primer. It's called the Pro Filter. Um, you can again get a sample of this. Every time you go to Sephora, you're allowed to get three samples. So, I mean, you might not be able to get all of it at once, or if you want to buy some of the things, you can try the things in the store too. So, if you go with no makeup on, you can try. <laughs> You could try and make a whole face of makeup right there and see what you like. So I just kind of focus this in the areas where I know I need it the most. Which is my T-zone and right under my eyes. And on my chin. So that would be here. I put a little too much there. But, um... To spread it out. I don't go all over with it. You don't need to. There's no point. It the primer. I mean, a lot. Some people do. They'll cover their whole face, but you really don't need to. You just put it in the areas where you need assistance with your makeup staying on better. Then 
then take your beauty blender. I like my beauty blender. Um, sometimes I might use a, a brush to apply my foundation. But I always go back through with a beauty blender. You're t supposed to take your beauty blender and get it damp. I have my hair cutting spray bottle full of water, so I'm just going to use that. I'm not going to go to the sink right now and dampen it. But once it's dampened, it almost, I don't know if you can tell the difference, it expands. If I have my other beauty blender laying around, oh. Then you take your foundation of choice, and today I'm going to show you this one because it's definitely a budget-friendly one. I think it's like $5 and change. It's the Wet n Wild foundation. And if you need to color correct, which is another thing thing I can record for you if you need you would do color correcting now like I mean I could do that but for one little guy I'm not totally worried about it and it this does have a quite a, a scent to it but I mean it really it doesn't bother me almost smells like paint <laughs> but once it's on it doesn't have that smell and it's funny, I never noticed it until somebody else pointed it out. I'm like, and it wasn't like they smelt my face and said, hey, your face smells like paint. It was um, another video I saw. They're like, it smells like paint. I'm like, I guess, I guess it does. And you don't want to smear and you don't want to drag. You want to bounce your beauty blender on your face to blend it out. I'm sure this is very entertaining right now. You're like, yay, face. There's a lot of things I do that other people don't do. And that's fine. Makeup has no rules and every time somebody says oh this is how you have to do it somebody comes and proves you don't like you know what i mean i was watching one video where somebody's like you never put uh whatchamacallit powder over cream then more powder it cakes up and somebody goes well that's what we just did for this said Thing we just did I don't want to get into specifics because I don't want to give away like who it was um, and they're like oh yeah and it didn't come out cakey it's all about your technique the way you use it the amount of product you do and what you're using so if you know the way your product works and you're happy with the way it looks then there's nothing wrong this is just the way I like to do things I'm sure there's always somebody going to be like, oh my god, why are you doing it that way? That's not even right. Well, it's the way I do it, and I like the way it looks, and other people like the way it looks too, so why not? So, now you got... A mini beauty blender that I just dampened. I'm sure you heard. Ooh. I like to use that for my concealer. Which is the NARS Radiance Creamy Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I use shade Chantilly Light 1. I'm a light one. What can I say? don't like to use too much of it I 
I mean, depending, if I was going to go someplace where I needed to be decked out all the time, then yeah, sure. But I just do it because, you know, where we work, it's stressful and I don't need people seeing the <laughs> stress bags. And then you put it in any place you want to be, like, highlighted or a little bit brighter. Because, I mean, you can get a concealer the same color as your skin tone, as your foundation. Or you can get one brighter. Um, I have some the same color as my skin. I have some that are brighter. Next, you have two options. Well, I mean, I'm going to only use one, but... And there's more than two options. You have... Actually, I'll show you three. Two are something you can buy at Walmart. And one is something that you get at Sephora. Sephora.com. Even Laura Mercier. It's Laura Mercier. And it's translucent loose setting powder. Then you have the Cordy... Cody Aerospun. It's just setting powder. This is in Walmart. And this one is neutral. Naturally neutral. I feel like that's me all the time. Then forgive the dustiness. This one just goes everywhere. Um, it's Elf. And it has nothing on the back. It is, again, another setting powder. But it tends to be one that flashes back, but I mean, if you're not going to be, well, it's dusty too, if you're not going to be taking lots and lots of pictures with a flash, then there's no point, but I'm going to stick with my Laura Mercier today. You take your Dampen Beauty Blender, get some product on that, and you set under your under eye. I don't do the whole of uh, baking per se. I do set this on and I do do a little thicker, but has minute the minute I'm done putting it in all the other places I want to set longer throughout the day, I take my big brush, which you'll see in a second, and I sweep it all away. But what I do is I take a tiny tiny bit on my brush and to take off the excess so I just kind of swirl it on the lid then I sweep off all the powder now I'm looking uh quite powdery don't be don't be hating you too can look this powdery Okay, I'm going to go finish the eyes now. So we take the same palette we were working on. And I'm going to start with this gray right here. I don't know if you can see it. It is password. Take that. Get it on my brush. Take it. And go right under the lash line with it. Kind of blend it all in and if you take out take your fluffy side you can kind of smudge it out a little bit more so it's not just a harsh harsh line I mean you can leave it that way I mean each their own do the other side I can't like not make faces I guess I gotta try not to but I also try not to stab myself in the eye that would be very beneficial Then I'm going to take some of the high and put it on my chip here and take it closer to the inner corner. 
same on this side. You know what? I'm gonna just put a little shimmer right under my brow bone. Now, my brows are scaring me. So I'm gonna go to my brows now. I'm jumping around, forgive me. So there's a couple different options. Let me grab them all for you. So one, you can do a brow gel, which has got just teeny bitty little spoolie on it. And I like all these options. This I need a new one because this is as far as it cranks up and that's sad. It, that much product, but I love it because it comes with the spoolie on the end. But it's the Brow Definer by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And it's in the color blonde. Which, you'll be surprised on how dark some of these colors can be for being what they say they are. And this is uh, Cabral by Benefit. And it's got a little brush on one end. And then a brow pomade inside. This is the one I'm going to use today, so I'll keep that out. And then this is Urban Decay Brow Kit. Comes with a lighter and a darker and wax. And in the bottom portion, which won't open for me today, comes with a little tweezer and two brushes. One for, I use one for my wax and one for the powder. And then there's a little camera, and there's there's some cell phone action. So what you need is you can get a pack of these cheap at Walmart, or you can buy a brush set that has it. It's a spoolie brush, forget the fur. Then you comb through your eyebrow, making sure it's in the direction you want, which is usually up and over and then down. Now, sis eyebrows are sisters and they're not twins, so don't stress going, oh my gosh, I didn't make my eyebrows perfect. As long as each one itself looks good, should be fine. So then I take it, I'm gonna have to take my little mirror down and I just go right under my brow. I start under my brow first. And which is making this hard is I have to get my eyebrows waxed. So I have little baby ferns right under, which are blonde. So you like light, light blonde, which you can't see. But I can see them when I try to do this. So that's just like has simple, like that's just underlining. Like, and you can see like a huge difference. Like it's just more defined. Normally I don't have to take my mirror down, but like I said, I have to get my brows waxed, so it makes it a little harder to see. And I have a lot of brow hair to begin with, so it's not that bad, it's just very light. So I just basically, I don't really have to build up the amount of hair I have, I just have to mostly darken it. That's why like the brow gels work if you have a lot of hair. But if you don't have a lot of hair it's really not going to make a big difference because it's just grabbing on what you already have. But the pomades, the powders, um, and the pencils. I would say the pomades and the pencils would be your best friend. And then powder after that just to Deepen it a little bit. And I never put a harsh line here. I take the line that I have here and I just push up with it. 
So I don't have a solid line here, but it goes here. I don't know. I can, you can kind of see the little blonde hairs right here. It's hard to, but they're there. My eyelashes are blonde too. And I have tons of eyelashes. They're just blonde. It's my favorite thing. When people go, oh, I had to wear mascara because I had no lashes either. I'm like, no, I have lashes. They're just blonde. You can't see them until I have mascara on. Like, I don't have to wear a lengthening one or a volumizing one. I just, you can't see my eyelashes. Like, my hair got darker as I got older, but my eyelashes didn't. I was born with almost white hair. That's how light my hair was. Till I think about, I was 13. It started darkening up. I'm sorry about the lighting, Annie. I have one... One light bulb. Is that it? You can't even see it. It's so bright. But there it is. I was going to do this in the bathroom, but... I didn't want to, like, move everything. Carry everything. All my stuff is right here. Now, I wasn't sure what I was going to do for today. So then I have this weird line. Which this is why I... Another reason I did this for you. Let's see, where is it? The Sephora Black Felt Tip Liner. You can take it, and now this makes it easy for you to follow. Let's see if you can see. That line, and then you take that line that you just made, and you bring it down, like that. I don't always do my uh, liner that thick, but I felt like for the eyeshadow we have on, it was fitting. And again, I have hooded eyes, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for the wing to show up properly. So. Eye shape plays a big part of how you're going to do your wing liner. And also, how thick you want it to. Like I said, I'm just going all out for a dramatic look today. Um, the other thing I'm not going to do today, which I do sometimes, obviously never at work because, I mean, you can't when you work with cake. Nobody wants a, <laughs> an eyelash in their cake. Or do they? I feel like some people would be excited if I could do like a whole makeup thing cake, like, and the stuff is actually usable on it. That would be interesting. So, I'm going to stick with my powders that I'm going to do now because I like to do all powders before I do my mascara. So that way it's not re-gunking. That's a term. Look it up. Re-gunking. I'm going to use Shade and Light. It's a contour palette. It looks like this. I 
again, to each their own. This is what I like to use. It's a unicorn. It was Tarts Unicorn Magic Collection. And you find the hollow of the cheek, and to know where it stops, you just kind of flick. And where the brush just stops, that's where you should stop with your contour. You don't want to go too much more crazier than that or your face starts looking really wonky. And then I put a little bit on my temples and my forehead. A little bit. Uh, sometimes I do my nose and sometimes I don't. I don't think I feel like really doing that right now. That will be another whole Annie video. And then I take my blending brush. It literally says Elf Ultimate Blending Brush. I'm trying to use some things from Sephora and some things that we sell at Walmart. Unfortunately, when it comes to highlighters, I don't have any that are from Walmart, although I heard, well, Wet n Wild has got a really nice one. I know this is going to be weird because... It is. Now I'm gonna bronze my face. That was just contouring. I, it's different because it's concentrated in one spot, but it kind of still, for me, because my skin is so light, still acts as a bronzer in a way. But now I'm gonna use Becca. And I'm gonna kind of mix, I like to mix these two. It's the matte bronzer and then a shimmery bronzer. I'm gonna put it a little bit higher than the contour, like start at the contour and a little bit higher and I just kind of make a, a, a three on one side and an E on the other. And when it, it's warmer out, I do go a little bit like right on top of my nose only because, well, the sun hits your nose too. So if you're all bronzed here and then you're just not there, it kind of looks like, I don't know, it looks weird to me. Then I'm going to go into a glow kit by Anastasia. Anastasia? Anastasia Beverly Hills. That was hard. I think, I think you know what I mean. I'm going to go in with Crushed Pearl. I go in to Crushed Pearl a lot. And right at the highest part of your cheekbone. Shiny. Ready? Ready? And then I'll take it and I'll put it a little bit on my nose, on my cupid's bow. And sometimes I pop it. I know this is a big brush, but I pop it right there. I can't help myself. Now I go back. I always do my highlight first or do my bronzer first and then my highlight so when I put my blush in it kind of blends the two together whereas if I do the highlighter after it kind of just kind of sits on top in a weird way I just like the way that this looks doing it in this order but again if you feel like you 
you like the way it looks the other way, go for it. It's, there's nothing wrong. And my uncle was one of the people who taught my, taught me how to do my makeup. And he always, always had a little blush in places that were a natural spot. Like if you were to blush and get flushed, you wouldn't just get flushed right on your cheeks. You, you wouldn't. It, so he would always just add a little bit of color and it wasn't until I started watching other people doing makeup that I realized not every nobody does that until I was watching Wayne Grass and he was like this is what we used to do and I still do it I'm like oh thank god somebody else does it all right so then we get the torture device out And you just kind of put it in, rock it, and then, I mean, I know my eyes and I know my eyelashes. I can give it a little tilt and it not pull or hurt. You can see the difference. There's that one, and there's that one. That's what I mean. I have plenty of eyelash. You can even see them on my Lid now. They're just pale. I'm gonna get, let's see, Better Than Sex, Goofies. I like holiday gift sets because they come with the little bitty itty babies and honestly I don't go through use mascara enough where I go through one to justify buying a big one I like the ones the mini ones that come with the sets and you go and you wiggle at the root of your eyelash Make sure to get a nice grip the whole way up. Some people do the bottom lashes, some people don't. Personal preference. I remember I was probably about eight years ago. I never liked to wear mascara. I don't know what it was. I just didn't. And one of my friends was looking at me. She goes, something about you. Your makeup looks pretty, but you look weird. What is it? She goes, you, you're not wearing mascara. I'm like, no. I don't know why. I just, I didn't see the point of it until she got me in mascara that, like, I didn't like them because I didn't like the way that they looked. They were clumpy and gross or stuck together because I was using what my mom would use. Nothing against what my mom would use. And it's not I would use hers. But it was just not, it didn't look good on my eyes. I just thought that's what it was and there was not other, no other kind. She found a good one for me. I bought it and I was like, oh, I do like mascara. And I feel like this lighting is n definitely not good. It's like blowing out everything I'm doing. So it's like, I've done nothing. I dropped something again, cause that's just how I am. Okay, so then I'm gonna put all nighter. Urban Decay. That's a big way I make my makeup stay. Now let's see. Look like a gold gray. 
I'm gonna go gray, gonna go gray. There we go, pretty. I don't tend to go through uh, lip liners too much unless I'm using an actual lipstick. When it comes to liquid lips, I don't. I don't know, I just tend not to. Again, like I said, far away in my work. Up close. We can really see. And then when I'm feeling frisky, which is like, you know me all the time, I go into a palette like this. The top row is shifts shift shades not shit shades shift shades and i'll take let's see i'm gonna go with a blue shift so it looks like that and just for comparison the purple's right next to it that's what the purple looks like it just and i go right here And it just adds. There you go. Love you, Annie.